Hello everybody, I'd like to continue with my dielectric test and various plasma um, systems and excite them and test them. But before I continue I would like to talk about something specific for all of you who would like to replicate that. How can I create a plasma or how can I, how can I initiate a plasma stream within a, within a gas mixture? So there are two ways to do that. One way is lots of heat, which we cannot really do here in this kind of experimentation and the other option is a lot of voltage when I say a lot of voltage I mean high voltage high voltage in my ex example here is between 20 and 30 K minimum so the so flyback is one, was one example what is a flyback for those of you who don't know what a flyback is in the old days when we had CRTs that means normal um, electron TVs that means where electron beam was um, was used for the screen and um, a high voltage was required um, to emit the, um, the electron and there was a, um, a fluorescent um, surface on the screen which did lit up when um, a beam did hit and this this um, electron beams was reflected via magnetic fields so they use a flyback to provide as a high voltage. So flybacks have um, one one drawback. They cannot be used for um, high current. So literally um, the current was very very little. Also the secondary um, um, coil, which was all wound between primary and secondary on a on a on a on a ferrite core, was very fragile, very very thin. 30, 32 um, AWG. Um, and a couple of hundred windings. So I'm going to replace it uh, with my bipolar Tesla coil documentation. You, you, you saw it on my previous video in my description field. So very very simple to replicate and I use also simple solid-state technology a little bit more powerful than before. So I use then here IXYS um, 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 a monoblock a mini monoblock which gives me this option to 625 watt I can put in it's 600 volt rated so not that expensive it's 80 pound um, I paid for it but with the correct tuning with my isolation transformer this one works really really well so that's the one I'm using here so you see here's the two um, spheres in a distance let me give you a chance just impression before we start um, continuing with, uh, with excitation um, so you all probably know all the Marx generators or you probably know um, a Jacobs letter where, where, the, where um, a beam of, 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 of plasma actually uh, is between um, the core. So that is about um, an inch, let's just say an inch, 2.5, 2.6 centimeter, it's about 26k keeps it. Of course once um, um, the spark is initiated it will run up. Um, one of the problems of a sphere is because of the of the properties of their dimension, they keep um, anything from sparking out. So they keep they retain the energy flow quite quite strong within this field here. That's why they are ideal for Tesla coils because they don't provide any breakout points. Any breakout points would be a spike, a needle, or whatever, which would give the system the opportunity to um yeah to discharge the charge energy into into the environment so here i have to do that i have to initiate that here with a little stick so let me give you a little expre um, explanation so that's 26k so i use just normal um, solid state technology so voltage i provide is around 100 volt um, it is about 100 what i'm putting into the system i have to admit Let's start that up and it's energized. It's about, yeah, it's about 100 watt now. You can hear it already. So that's quite impressive. Start it up where we left it the last time. So I made a couple of experiments and I couldn't influence the signal. So I have reduced the frequency a bit 
so it's around yeah 80 90 watt at the moment so and I, I tried okay I'm not getting shocked it's not hurting and you can see my finger is able to, to take energy away here when I do that it increases the current quite a lot but it doesn't have any yeah, only when it touches up here is see that if I come to the middle it touches me when it comes up it's getting hot I have to be careful because it's inside quite hot So if I take it up here, that's fine. Let's try it with a magnet. So this is a strong N42 as well, not as strong as the other ones I had, but it should have some influence. Let's see if that makes any difference. I touch it and it doesn't influence this plasma at all. That's strange. So that is not really proper in a way. I don't reflect it. I don't get touched by it either. And I had it in my hand so so I can influence it by touching by like going with my finger to it. Yeah, that takes the energy away, that's working. But that's about it. Now let's now move on to the Funnetron tube. And that is gonna be much different. So here I have the Funtron tube. Um, you have seen that in my previous video already. So I do the same thing here. So it's between the dielectric field. There is no contact at all. So I try to attempt to excite the gas which is helium inside directly. So this is a proper gas mix and this plasma creating in here will be different. So let's get to it. I have reduced the light a little bit and uh, we'll energize the system now. So you can see that the gas is starting to be excited from the side already, not just from the electrodes, because electrodes are not connected to anything at all. So let's have a look. So you see in the middle. Um, that is excited field. You see the two streamers coming here from here directly. And when I go to the field, you see quite directly so that I can get that. That this gas is actually that plasma getting touched with me. I can also, you see here, influence that with my finger. So I literally influence the frequency and so on. And that's quite interesting to see. So that has an impact here and I can change here the so, so way it, it's, it's rotating literally. So let's go with a magnet to it. So this is a magnet now, the same I was using before. See what happens here. It has, it has a strong influence. I'm actually pulling up, see, can you see that? Yes, I'm pulling up a streamer from here up. On the other side as well. I'm literally reflecting. And that's the way you normally contain a plasma field within a container by literally repelling it from so the surface like I do it here at the moment in that way and by doing that you control the flow yeah and that is rotating here if I go to that it starts to rotate it's not good to see here because it's white but when I, when I have it at a specific position it's rotating Let's see if I can get it a bit better. So here on this side is fine. Maybe it's because of the polarity of the magnet. I'm going to test it with some other magnets as well. Now it's rotating here.
that's quite nice. So bear in mind that is not connected to the electrode. So the electrode itself is only in a pathway, but has at the moment literally not really a functionality. The gas itself is excited between the dielectric field. That's very, very important. Let's see what else we can do here. It is now tuned to um, focus on the middle, so the middle is now quite strong working and um, currently I'm using 100 watt. Whenever I influence the system, the current increases. So I can go here with my fluorescence bulb. You see the radiation here on that side is quite low, it goes in here, but that comes mainly from from by the tester coil. But you, what you can see here is that the field is quite strong. So if I get go with my fingers here, see that? So it's it's actually coming here from from the gas in the middle, which is excited quite strongly at the moment. Of course I influenced the dielectric field with my fingers which cause here this streamer to rotate. It's currently about 100 watt pushing in and it's getting warm on the side already. It's not connected to the electrode. So the next test I would like to do is Let's get it to the electrode connected to see how that looks like.